I will talk about how you can use protein domain families, of protein domains, for assigning functions and understanding evolution of proteins. So, in this study, we performed used two different databases, use SCOP and PFMA, and we tried to study the evolution of domains and how many domains proteins have in different organisms. So basically, both these methods can be used, we can use HAMMER, a HMM program, to assign domains to protein families, to protein sequences. And this will be cover some part of the sequence. And then we can do something else to analyze the rest. So in this case, we developed our own database called MASS, which is basically similar to P1B, so it's a similar uh, approach. And then we have also some unassigned regions in between. And one question is, is like, when should we assign an unassigned region to be a domain? Because it's an orphan domain. Basically, all domains are very rare to other parts. And uh, we can see the easiest way is just to use the length cutoff. So if you use length cutoff of 100, in this case, in the left case with PFAM, we will have three domains, but in the right case with, with SCOP, we will have four domains, because we have 210, um, more than 200 unassigned residues in between there. And then we also use short regions, the, the, we call domain adjacent regions, DARS. If you do that, uh, you can see, I mean, first you can see how large coverage are in prudent families. So if you use, you use PFAM alone, you can have a coverage about 70%. The scope is smaller, you assume it's more about 50%. Uh, but that's because particular memory fluids are not very well represented in, 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 in scope. But otherwise, it's quite similar coverage. So if you do that and you sign the rest of the levels, you see that you cover uh, a significantly uh, larger part of uh, bacterial genomes with PFA than you with eukaryotic genomes. So if you look at the rest of your levels with PFMA and also with SCOP. But uh, then if you have a PFMB or there's multiple mass regions, you, you, you end up with rather similar numbers and you up to something like 75 percent of the genomes. And uh, uh, you see that there are still about 10, 15, 20 percent that are not assigned to anything else. There are either proteins without any homologs or, or domains without any homologs. There are about one quarter of the residues that are not assigned to anything. Today. So in eukaryotes, as I said, in more familiar details, one third is assigned to P from A, one third to P from B, uh, one eight twenty percent, eighteen percent are not having homo store, and then are some short regions in between that covers the rest. Prokaryotes much more P from A, and fewer fractions are orphans. If you do this and use a good difficult of, you see an interesting pattern. If you look at the number of domains, so you have single domain proteins that are black, two domain proteins that are gray, and three more domain proteins that are white in this blush. And independently of what method we use, so if you use P4A, P4A plus B, SCOP, SCOP plus MAS, you get very, very similar patterns. And we see that basically in eukarya and bacteria, about 60% of the sequences are single domain, 20% are double two domain proteins and 12% are more. In contrast, in eukaryotes, you have about 40% that are single domain and about 40% with more even that are multi-domain, more than two.